Well, I thought for uh, large majority of the game, I, I was really pleased with our effort. I thought coming into the game, uh, probably the best three-point shooting uh, team uh, that we had faced so far. I mean, we had three guys uh, in their starting lineup that we felt were, were knockdown three-point shooters. Um, well, I shouldn't say starting lineup because Harrison Docks came off the bench, but we felt like Aaron Cosby, Nigel Snipes, and Harrison Docks were, were three legitimately high-level shooters from the three-point line. And, you know, as you know, that, that can change a game in a hurry. And so we, we really concentrated on trying to make sure that the transition three uh, wasn't available, that uh, we were hard on our closeouts and make those guys deck the ball, put the ball on the floor. And, and we talked about and talked about Justin Johnson trying to keep him off the offensive glass. You know, to me, he's like the J.J. Watt of college basketball. His motor is, is really impressive. If he were a couple inches taller, um, um, it would be even scarier than it already is. So, but I, I thought uh, we earned our victory tonight because, despite us missing all of our most of our players on Wednesday, we came back and I, I was really nervous that our practice on Thursday was going to be poor, based on guys being out for a couple of days with the flu or whatever it was. And their energy level was great. Their attention to detail uh, was really good. And we had a, we had a really sharp practice and we followed it up with the same effort yesterday. And when you put those type of practices together, it generally um, comes out on game night. You are who you are every day on the practice floor. So, How much did sticking to man-to-man -man defense affect that um, perimeter percentage they had? We, we just didn't want to uh, – we, we did not want – I didn't feel comfortable uh, zoning a team that had three, you know, 40-plus percentage three-point shooters on the floor. And until about six minutes left in the game, possessions are going to be longer against our zone for the most part. Uh, and they also had a couple of those kids out. And so it was, that was the only time we felt, or I felt comfortable going zone. The, after the NKU game, you obviously talked about handling success and, and learning from that. Do you feel like they're moving in the right direction here? We did tonight. You know, it's a never ending uh, process, never ending struggle. Uh, we pointed out Miami of Florida. You know, they, they go to Puerto Rico and uh, blitz three really good teams. You go Mississippi State, they beat 16, uh, ranked Utah at the time by 24. Um, they, they crushed Butler. I know that the score was 10, but it, was, it, was, it wasn't that close. And they come home and, and lose to Northeastern. And Northeastern's a good program, but it's not the level of those three teams they saw in Puerto Rico. And so we, we pointed that out. Nobody's immune. If you don't bring it on game night, um, you know, you'll lose. You guys are obviously pretty happy with such a, a, a blowout win, but James talked about some flaws and things you guys need to work on. What did you see that you felt like the team does need to work on at this point? Well, I think, again, I keep pointing out consistency. I, I think we're playing very well at times uh, on both ends of the floor. I thought our interior defense, particularly Jalen, um, defensively uh, is, is not doing what he needs to do. Uh, Justin Johnson had his way with him. Uh, offensive rebounding was probably um, the first time that we were challenged by a team that really uh, prides itself and has guys actually go to the offensive glass. And, you know, we gave up 12 of them. Certainly their, their low shooting percentage leads to more opportunities, but they still got more offensive rebounds than we did. Um, you know, so there, there are always things that you can clean up from game to game. But I thought our effort was really, really good. Thank you.